Hey guys, if you're like me, you have a ton of house plants and you have a ton of plants that have been outside and now they're going to come inside for the winter until we get some warmer weather. And there's something that always comes in with your house plants and that is fungus gnats. I'm going to show you 11 ways to get rid of fungus gnats. And one of those ways works absolutely better than all the others. But each of those 11 ways can be combined together to create one of the most effective ways to control fungus gnats and stop them in, from infesting your garage, greenhouse, or living area. So guys, if the plants you're bringing inside are really small or you're starting new plants and you're adding new soil to it, you want to make sure that you sterilize the soil. And that's very easy to do. You're just going to put it in a plastic bag, add boiling water to that plastic bag, let it cool down for a little bit, and then microwave it for 90 seconds to two minutes to kill any of those fungus gnats larvae that may be in the soil. Now, a really simple way you can outsmart the gnats is they do not like to lay their eggs on very dry soil. So you can use one of these three products and put about a quarter inch to half an inch layer on each of the pots you're bringing in, small seedlings or whichever. And just remember, these three will drop very quickly, which is sand, turfus, which is what they use on baseball fields. I'll put a link down below where you can purchase this unless you live close to a store that sells it. It's a little hard to find. I've had to order mine online because there's only one... One place I knew I could buy it in my local town, but it's just a lot easier for me to order it on Amazon. And the next thing is perlite. All three of these drain extremely quickly. They dry out quickly. And if a fungus gnat, an adult fungus gnat, flies in, lands on the plant area, they, want, they will not want to lay their eggs on any of these three because the soil top is very dry and they think there's no moisture down beneath. They fly away and that will prevent fungus gnats in a very simple way. Now another thing you can do even if you're using this on the top is to not water from above but water from below. You can use a pot like this, put your seedling or small house plant in it and allow it to wick up the moisture from the holes in the bottom of your potted plant and that way there will be absolutely no moisture on the surface of the soil which will discourage fungus snaps from even landing there and exploring whether or not they want to lay their eggs. So using a high quality cinnamon powder is also an option. You can sprinkle it on the top of the plant right at the soil. And this acts as a fungicide, which is what the fungus larvae feed off of. So this can help also making a tea with it about four tablespoons to about one cup of water and pouring it once it cools, pouring it on the soil, which also has the same effect as a fungicide and it gets deeper into the soil. Now next you can actually make a trap from a container of any type glass and you can add about two ounces of apple cider vinegar to it. And you're gonna put in that first, and then you're gonna add a couple of drops. In this case, I'm using Johnson's baby shampoo, but you can use dish soap or any other type of shampoo. Put a couple of drops there. The fungus gnats are highly attracted to the, anything that's fermented, so apple cider vinegar will attract them right to it. Lastly, you wanna use a kitchen funnel, or you can make your own funnel by using a piece of paper, rolling it into a cone, and then have a small opening at the bottom and do the same thing. Put it into your cup. It, the fungus gnats will fly in, get trapped, and eventually drown in the solution. So this is a very simple way to do it, but it only works, of course, on the adult fungus gnats that are flying around. It does nothing for the larvae and the eggs that may already be contaminated in your houseplant seedlings and that soil. Now next is going to require a little bit of work in removing the top one to two inches of soil of your, if you're not planning on completely changing the soil, of your house plant or seedlings and using diatomaceous earth, mix it in about one tablespoon of diatomaceous earth per cup of soil. Mix it thoroughly and this will work in killing the nematodes and also any other insects that might be inside of the soil. Next you can use sticky traps that are specifically designed to capture the fungus gnats and also other types of gnats that might be flying around. The yellow is a very common type of fungus gnat trap because they're attracted to that. But rather than buying the small ones, I like to buy these large ones and I can cut them into strips and I just take a pair of scissors before I peel the wax paper off. Then I can take one of these and put it into each one and it just put it in each plant because I have a lot of house plants and it sure saves a lot of money because if you're trying to buy one for each plant that can become rather expensive. So just buying a case of these and cutting them into strips and putting one in each plant saves you a lot of money. So that's a little tip I can tell you about the glue traps. Now the next thing is one of the most common that everyone seems to know about is the hydrogen peroxide 3% solution mixing four parts hydrogen peroxide and one part water Put it in a misting sprayer and mist the soil 
with that. You can also do a complete drench where you put it in your watering can and just water it heavily. But the hydrogen peroxide in water is a standby, but it's not a solution to use by itself. You need to use it in conjunction with some of the other ones. But we're getting to the number one that works best of all coming up in just a sec. Now the next product you can use for the fungus gnats is neem oil. You want to do a 50% solution of 50% water, 50% neem oil, and you can mist spray the soil with this. And this needs to be a quality neem oil. Not all neem oils you see on the store shelves are any good. You want it to be 100% neem oil and it needs to be filtered and cold pressed to make sure you're getting the best quality neem oil. Now next is the mosquito bit tea. If you put the mosquito bits directly on the soil, sometimes they can actually mold and that can be an issue in itself. So just remember, you want to make the tea. You put three tablespoons of mosquito bits into water. Let it steep in the tea, whether you're using a, a used tea bag or you make your own out of a paper towel. Just let it steep in there for about an hour and allow it to get that into the water. One gallon, remember, and three tablespoons of mosquito bits. So the next thing I use for my fungus gnats is a trap that's plugged into my kitchen at this very moment. And it's a trap that stays lit all 24 hours a day. But when the lights go out in the kitchen, anything, any of the gnats or fungus gnats that are flying around are drawn to that one specific area. And there's a glue trap on the back side of that trap. And I'll link that type of trap down below. But I don't use that in the greenhouse. And it's kind of a little bit more on the expensive side. So putting one in every room where I have plants would be a little bit more expensive. So I always say go back to the soil. That's where you want to get the control started. But if you already have the problem in your house, one of those traps plugged into the wall will draw them right to it once the rest of the lights are cut out in the room and that will take care of that problem fairly quickly. So guys, the actual best way to do this, I think, is with beneficial nematodes. And you're going to add that to your watering regimen. And you do this about once every six weeks and you add it to the soil water your plants with it, and those beneficial nematodes will go into your soil and eat the larva of the fungus gnat, and it will just stop the life cycle of the fungus gnat. Now, you'll obviously have to do one of the other methods if you have them flying around in your home, but if you want to stop it more completely and long term is to add the beneficial nematodes to your watering schedule, put it in the soil, and then do that over a period of a couple of weeks, and then you'll see a huge reduction in the fungus gnats that are flying around because you've broken that life cycle. So I'll put a link down below where you can order the beneficial nematodes. They're kind of a little bit harder to find in your local stores and online. It's a super easy way to get them to you in just a matter of a few days. So obviously they go by the name fungus gnat because they prefer plants that have fungus growing in the soil. And so one of the best ways to prevent that is to have a fan blowing on a timer, oscillating fan, so it can keep the mold down and stop that growth from happening in your soil. And that's an easy tip you can do to prevent it from even starting. So guys, another thing that will really help is by having a dehumidifier in the room where you have, if you have a lot of house plants in one particular room, is by having a dehumidifier in that room. And if you're growing desert plants, then of course they can do really well in a dry air environment. Some plants will not do as well in that environment, but if you can install a dehumidifier or have a dehumidifier in the room where you're growing a lot of plants, garage, basement and having drier air, that's going to help cut down on the fungus and also the fungus gnats. Now, a very unconventional way I'd heard of recently was to put ice on the top of the soil as the nematodes do not like colder temperatures. They want it to be above 60 degrees and just doing that once a week might cut down on the number of nematodes in the soil. That's kind of an unusual way to do it. I've never tried it, but it's a tip that I came across along the way. So if you want to try something that's completely all natural, putting some ice cubes on the soil all around the base of the plant, not touching the plant, but just on the top of the soil and doing that about once a week might cut down on the nematodes in your soil. So guys, I hope this will help you get your fungus gnats under control, but it's not just a one step process. I think the, nem the beneficial nematodes are going to help the most, but I think doing two or three of these methods in conjunction with the other will really eliminate them long term. So I hope you'll like and subscribe if you found something useful. And if I left anything out or you have a new way that you like to control fungus gnats around your house plants or your seedling startings, list it down below. I would love to see it in the comments section. Thanks so much and have a great day.